And uh, submodeling, uh, the benefit is that we can run a lot more simulations in less time. And specifically, submodeling allows us to define a portion of a larger FEA model as a submodel, and then we can rerun only that portion. And this capability is available for linear static analysis and simulation professional or nonlinear static analysis and simulation premium. Uh, specifically, uh, the steps in creating a submodel and what we're going to do in this video is that we build a global uh, static study and we run that study and then we uh, create a new study and we select submodeling and then all we have to do is pick the bodies that we want to analyze in the submodel and then the submodel is automatically created uh, with the displacements transferred from the global model to the submodel and then we are going to locally add some mesh refinement to that submodel and then we are going to duplicate the study and make some changes to the geometry. The example we're going to use today is a truck frame and it's interesting because we need to design this uh, center rail uh, for access and so we're experimenting with different riveted and bolted configurations. And the model is a combination of solid bodies representing the rivets and the, uh, the local uh, sheet metal and then the remainder of the model is using surface bodies which allow us to use shell elements which uh, by themselves are actually quite efficient so combined with the submodeling uh, we're going to be really reducing our simulation time. Now the simulation that we're running on this structure is two corners of the model are fixed as we can see in our feature manager and then the remaining two corners uh, one corner is going up 10 millimeters and then the second corner is being forced down 10 millimeters, a pretty typical twist test. And if we look at our results, everything is simulating as planned and we'll reduce our legend so we can see what's going on in the center rail area. So when we look at our rivets, we see that the, the first front one is getting most of the stress and most of the action and we're going to rerun just this center rail and refine the mesh on the front rivet so that we can get uh, better stress results. To create our submodel, we can go to the simulation command manager and start up a new study and we select the submodeling. We can give our study a name. And it gives us a nice warning here, or a reminder, uh, that on the boundaries between the submodel and the local model, uh, we can really only have a bonded contact relationship. We can't have uh, connectors such as bolts or pins, or no penetration contact. And then we need to pick the bodies uh, that are going to belong to our submodel. And we can use a feature manager, or we can pick them from the canvas. I'll grab all of our solid bodies that represent the rivets and then our surfaces and then we say OK. And the displacements on the boundaries will be automatically transferred uh, from the global model to the local model. So we see that fixtures, we have a displacement defined and then our remaining solid bodies and the excluded bodies from the assembly. and I would like to apply some uh, local mesh controls before I run the simulation and we'll just uh, apply a local mesh refinement on the first rivet and it's just like any other simulation study right mouse button on mesh and apply mesh control and we want to get really tight in this area, so we'll use a half a millimeter mesh size. Now we can just rerun the study. Now that our submodel is completed, uh, we'll take a look here at a section plot of von Mises stresses, and we're overlaying uh, the mesh 
so we can see that we have a nice tight mesh and uh, pretty reasonable resolution on our rivet and this is the first one that had uh, mesh control on it and if we compare this to the rivet in the rear that we didn't apply our mesh control it's pretty chunky stresses and you can see that the stresses aren't uh, as pretty or, or continuous and so we would really want them uh, in the uh, the most highly loaded rivet here where we really want to understand what's going on uh, everything is looking good and the best thing is, is that we didn't have to run uh, the whole entire model uh, to just uh, look at this portion and we'll look at a quick contour uh, of the entire model and let's say we want to make some changes to this model it's a very simple uh, one thing I always like about working in SOLIDWORKS simulation is that we can duplicate our studies and make changes to our configurations so I'm going to duplicate the center model or the center rail model we call this inversion light and we're going to make a, a geometric change and rerun the simulation. So when this study is duplicated, we end up with a, another derived configuration uh, specific to this model. So 3D bolt light and then we can make geometric changes to this. So let's say I have a, a trim and I want to do some uh, removing of materials. So I will unsuppress a surface trim for this configuration. And it's the same process. I can go in and remesh the model. and then rerun the simulation. So our lightweighted uh, submodel has run through fine and we can see we can get a uh, idea of what the stress distribution and values are going to look like uh, without rerunning that global model. One thing we do want to keep in mind is that this model is being driven with displacements at the border so one thing we can do to compare the behavior of this model uh, is to look at the force required to create this twisting displacement and this is pretty simple to do we can just say list result forces and pick the edges on the border and we see that our resultant force is about 124 and a half pounds in the lightweighted model to create the twisting motion and let's compare this back to the non-lightweight version of the center rail model and the original model was 128 pounds so uh, not too much of a difference in overall stiffness of the center rail so our stress results shouldn't change too much so we can continue and uh, try some different configurations out using our submodel and then go back and do a, a verification run after we've gone through some iterations and come up with some design ideas and rerun the master model So I hope you can see uh, how you can get some uh, use and some value out of uh, the new submodeling tool in 2013. And it's a very simple process. Uh, we take our global model, uh, we create the new submodel study, we just pick the bodies that we want to include in the submodel, and then our displacements are automatically transferred over and then we can easily add local mesh refinements to that model and then we can also make geometric changes.